Next to Brittany at Back to Basics. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, sorry. Um, now, hi. Thank you for enduring and just your patience with answering our questions. I just appreciate your time. My name is Brittany. I'm with Back to Basics Magazine. We're based in Denver, Colorado. I am a, a graduate of Oakwood University. And so just hearing this story and um, your testament of faith um, just really you know, gets to me on a personal level. Um, so thank you, Devon, for your work and, and just the idea and cultivating this story of your great village. Um, one question I had is actually for Aunt Ida. Um, just hearing how you mentioned the church and um, their belief in divorce and how your husband, um, I believe it was Pastor Williams, um, how he said, I'm going to preach and um, did not give up or, you know, put his gift to the side. He was perseverant and um, just continued. So I would ask you just how do you persevere even to this day when the church can sometimes be the church and be judgmental or um, you know look at you sideways um, just how would you give some words of wisdom about the perseverance piece in in the faith journey uh, thank you so much for asking um, it was difficult in the beginning and um, although in the very beginning, I shed many tears because I didn't know what was going to happen, but uh, my husband never lost faith. Um, from the very beginning, he said, it's not a matter of if I'm going to preach, it's just where. Mm -hmm. And um, so once we came back up to the Bay Area, because that's where the majority of my family lived, and we came back up to the Bay Area from Bakersfield, um, we had church, I think I said that in the book, but we had church in our home the very first Sabbath. And it was just the two of us. And then that Sunday we went out and looked for some place. It's in the book, I think. But we went out and looked for a place and um, the rest is history. But it was really through prayer and um, the strength of my husband who just, you know, relied totally on God from day one and said, this is the way it's going to be. This is the way God is leading us. And uh, so that's kind of the end of the story. Yes. Um, fortunately, he passed away a couple of years ago, but uh, God is continuing to bless Wings of Love. Yes, thank God. And the family, I mean, you see the fruits of your labor and even for the generations to come because with this piece of work, it's such a beautiful tribute, but because it is in the audible form, it does you know, preserve the voices. And so I'm thinking of, the children of the children, you know, will be able to have this to, to look upon and it's Absolutely. inspiring to me. And I would, you know, definitely encourage all of the, the wonderful black women on here, the men as well to, to start those conversations with our, the, you know, older generations. It's so beautiful. Um, I do have a follow-up question for Mr. Franklin. Uh, because in the beginning, you said uh, the only way to go forward is to go back. And we believe in that wholeheartedly, back to basics. Um, so it sounds like in, in your basics and your upbringing, I heard um, stories of the, the commitment of your village, as well as the pain and the love and, you know, just all of the stories go on and on. But it ultimately came down to me to, um, you know, do the best with what you have and kind of let God work out the rest. I guess how you get back to your basics in a daily daily walk. Um, yeah, you know, I think the back to the basics is really about just part of it is remembering, you know, who you, who we, who you are, who we are, where we come from, um, you know, not what's important, um, you know, and, and really what matters the most. Uh, I think, you know, when you talk about basics, it's like, okay, well, what are the basic things that I need to, to live a productive life? And if we think about life through that lens, I think a lot of things and a lot of situations fall, fall away. Um, you know, because I think a lot of times we're accumulating and we're running and we're trying to do all these things. But fundamentally, when you get to the basics, you say, well, what really matters? And so I would just, for me, I try to be cognizant of that, like what matters uh, if I'm upset about something, well, why am I upset? You know, we'll really try to just stay focused 
uh, on what it is that matters, which is, you know, as long as you have love and you got God and you got some people in your life that care for you, you can make it through anything. Thank you. Of course. And thank you, Brittany. And we're going to go. I can't imagine having so many strong women behind me. Were there any pressures? Uh, and then two, uh, was there one thing um, that you knew you either had to do or wanted to do for both your mom and your aunts, especially with the sacrifices that they made for you? Uh, that's a great um, question. You know, I, I mean, from a very early age, I always had a very strong sense of self, you know, so did I feel the pressure to be who they wanted me to be? No, no, I really didn't. You know, I mean, there, um, I think uh, Brittany from Back to Basics mentioned that she went to Oakwood University. That's a pretty big, um, you know, it's a pretty big institution within the Adventist, the Black Adventist community. And so a lot of people in my family went to Oakwood uh, for college. And so there was a, you know, an encouragement for me to go and do that. And I said, I'm not doing that. That's not, <laughs> God's not calling me to Oakwood. I'm going to USC. I'm going to Hollywood. That's what I'm going to do. And I didn't think nothing of it. There was so, didn't matter how many conversations they had. And I'd be like, well, just go for a year. I said, I'm, I'm no, I don't know. I went to visit and I said, thank you. It's great. I, it's great for whoever. It's, it's not because I had anything against Oakwood. I'm just saying it wasn't for me. Yeah. It wasn't my path in life. And so, you know, I, I, there was also, I talked about this in the book. Um, you, hear, you can hear the story about, you know, how before I went to um, American Legion Boys, Na Boys State, I had, you know, shaved my, my hair and I had a very close haircut and Donna thought I was crazy and you know, and I was going to blow my chances. And I, I just, I didn't even listen to her. I'm like, whatever, you know, like I, I'm going the way I want to go. Uh, and it worked out fine. You know, I was, I was, I ended up going to Boys Nation. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't think I felt a lot of pressure to be who they wanted me to be. I think they're all strong individuals. And I think that individualism is something that I really, you know, gravitated to. And, you know, and, and trust me, I mean, that's that individualism's you know, sometimes it's been stubbornness and they just, they are like, oh, Devon, you can't tell them nothing, you know? Uh, and so that's okay. I take that too, right? Like, it's like, yeah, well, you can sometimes, but y'all raised me to have a point of view and I have it. Um, so I really didn't feel that type of pressure to be something to them that I, I wasn't. Uh, and then I think, you know, on the other side of it, I think the thing that I've been cognizant of growing up is just, uh, how do you say it? Um, wanting to make good on the investment that they have put in me, you know? So it's like, when you put, you know, when you take your money, you put it into, uh, you know, into to a stock, you want that company to do what they need to do. So you get a return. You know, you're not looking just to, you know, buy stocks and lose your money. You're looking to get a return. That's why you invest to begin with. So for me, the idea that they made this investment in me and my brothers, I was very cognizant of wanting them to see a return on their investment, you know, that the sacrifices were, you know, worth it, that, that the late nights of conversation didn't just fall on deaf ears. Uh, the times that they went without, especially my mother, so that we could go with, that now, you know, when I have the resources to help or to, to, to take care of them in some way, I let them know like, hey, you know, your sacrifice was not in vain. And so again, I don't let that control me, but it's something I'm very cognizant of. Uh, because I do want them to feel great about the things that they've done uh, and also see the fruits of what they've done. You know, it's like to be able to do this, even this audible book and the photo shoot and the video shoot, and, you know, literally they were, they were, you know, treated like the stars that they are. And to be able to experience all that is just, it for me is like, yes, it's a great way to just say thank you and to let them know that they're, that they did get a return on, on the investment they made. 